Securities offered through Kestra Investment Services, LLC. Kestra IS, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Kestra Advisory Services, LLC. Kestra AS, an affiliate of Kestra IS. Capital Advisory Group, Inc. is not affiliated with Kestra IS or Kestra AS. Neither Kestra IS nor Kestra AS provide legal or tax advice and are not certified public accounting firms. You work hard for your money. For the next hour, you're going to learn how to keep what's yours. Capital Advisory Group presents Keep What's Yours. Here are Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Welcome to the show, Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall. I'm Josh Gilbert sitting here with Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Happy Saturday. And if you ever need anything from Jeff, which I highly recommend, if you aren't doing anything when it comes to your taxes, if you haven't set up uh, an FSA or an HSA or a uh, a an medical, IRA. an IRA. <laughs> you know, what are you doing for retirement? Oh, we'll find out when we get there. Good luck. No, no. If you haven't done anything, we can guarantee that there's something you can be doing. Or something, yes, that you could do to help you re- legally reduce your taxes. Whether it's uh, two weeks from now on your next paycheck. Exactly. Or a year from now on your taxes. Or, or year end. Yeah. 50 years from now. Yes. When it comes time to retire. And Jeff, how many people have come in to the office and said, hey, I want to start something for my kids? Yes. You know? A lot of people. So again, 529 plans, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to give them the ability they could do whatever they want to do with the money. Um, and then we're So the like, 529, that's strictly for school? It's education, higher education, um, but it also goes to... they can to use that for trade schools any, or yeah. junior colleges. Yeah, it used to be an accredited school, but they've kind of taken that off uh, the, the, the list in a sense. It could be used for element, private elementary, private high school, 10000 a year. Um, it could be used for college. Uh, used to be where it was only tuition. could be used for room and board, new iPads, computers, um, supplies, tutors all that fun stuff. So in some cases, state of Missouri, state of Illinois, uh, state of Missouri, you could put up to $16,000 into the 529 to get a, a technically a 5% state tax credit. Hmm. So you're going to make the tuition payments anyway, so why not? Yeah, you might as well sock it away. Try and squeeze a little bit of money out of it. And get some money out of it. So um, there's that. So if yes. you've got kids in school or you have tuition that you have to pay or it's trade school or it's... Yeah grade school or it's daycare. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you could be socking it away off your paycheck uh, and make sure that when it comes time to the end of the year, you've saved some money or in this case, kept. Kept some money. Kept more of <laughs> to what's keep. yours. To keep some money. <laughs> That's right. So if you're not doing anything, we can almost guarantee you that there's something out there for you. Six yes. three six three nine four five five two four. And that is Capital Advisory Group, Capital Advisory, GRP.com. That's where you find Jeff. Now, inflation. Yes. We got numbers. Big numbers. So this month, try to the tune of 3.18%. That's what the current inflation rate is. Um, Last month, and this is the scary part, was 2.97. So you go, wow, it's, you know, a 0.20 increase or 0.21% increase, but it is an uptick in inflation. And this is the third... Not much of an increase. Not much. But, but it's the it third, was an increase. Yeah, third month in a row where we've okay. seen an uptick in actual inflation. And, so, And what we're looking for here is last year it was out of control. Oh, so this time last year it was 85 Okay. So it's come way down, and you go, rah, rah. So that's good. But every month since then, it has been coming down with the Fed raising interest exactly. rates. Exactly, exactly. With doing whatever it is they're doing to try to curb inflation. And then this month, it ticked back up. Yes. So the, the issue is, is with, infl- with inflation coming from as high as a little bit over 9%, they've got it down into that 4 or 5% range easy. Um, that was the easy part of the equation. To get it to the Fed's target of two to two and a half could be a whole nother ball game. And you figure, well, it's only like a point, point and a half. How hard could that be? That may equate to two, three, four percent higher in uh, interest rates to get it down even more. So it's like uh, losing weight. 
the first 25 yes. pounds came right off. Right off, yeah. <laughs> those last five pounds. <laughs> that were hard. That we struggled with. The The Fed wants to hit a target of two to two and a half. That's their, their, fu- their future inflation factor that they'd like to use. Two to two and a half percent is what they want. But uh, last month we were at 2.9. This month we're at mm-hmm. 3.1. You know, we're close. We're close, I but I mean, not. within five percent. Exactly. But remember, this is X food and oil. So this is the federal, the Fed's version of inflation. Um, oil would have probably helped because oil came down dra- dramatically over the last three or four months. It's now turned the corner and started to go back up. So Mobile, um, Shell, Phillips 66, a couple of those companies reported their earnings a few weeks ago, and they missed the mark by a mile mm-hmm. because the price of a bar- a pri- a price of a barrel of oil dropped dramatically. I I am stunned. That I, I know every company wants to, you know, hit a target or whatever. Mm-hmm. But with oil prices fluctuating the way they do, why yes. do they even bother um, <laughs> setting a goal for themselves? I guess it's a game for them. You but know, that's, six months later, yeah. it could crater. It, and they could make $50 billion if it goes up and they make a ton more money. Yeah. So, But if the oil prices come down, that's kind of the joke um, in an election year, which is coming up next year. Um, the bulk of candidates, or I shouldn't say that, the bulk of um, uh, people in, in power will tap the, the, the strategic reserves to, to f- artificially bring down the, the, the cost of f- gas for us um, through that six month, seven month span up to the election, and then they go back and restock it. And that's really used for a uh, time of emergency, a war, something of that. We have these strategic uh, reserves stacked around the U.S. Um, but I think pretty much each administration has done it in the past, make it look good, borrow from it, um, pay it back. So, Right. And, uh, oh, I love, I love that. It's like, hey, uh, this will look good. Yeah, look if, what I did. Yeah, you know? if I <laughs> borrow from our strategic reserves – and then we go to put it back and, and now uh, have to pay twice twice what, as no. <laughs> much. So, you know, they should they should put that as part as Biden or Trump's campaign. Exactly. Saying, hey, this, the difference you guys flip the bill for. So. Yeah. You got to you got to pay that difference. Yeah, yeah. Boy, you know, is there an honest politician? Questionable. I, yeah, <laughs> I, haven't, I have not found one. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're going to keep trying, even though we're a half a percent away yeah, from they, our target. They have to keep, keep trying. trying. And, and the problem is back in the late 70s, early 80s, Paul Volcker, who was the Federal Reserve chairman at that point in time, had the, the, the Federal Reserve pause. They didn't raise interest rates any higher. Um, and then within six months, inflation raised its head, kicked back in. And that's why we went into that, that period of time where we had interest rates of 13, 16, 18 percent. Um, it's great because you could put money in a CD and get a 15 percent you know, yield on it. But if you borrowed money, you were paying 18 percent to yeah. the bank. So hopefully we do not go down those paths. Um, you got to say the word seven, seven and a half, seven and three quarters for your standard mortgage interest. If they keep raising rates, it could escalate even higher. Um, hopefully, we do not hit the double-digit mark, um, but the Fed has a lot of tools at their disposal um, that are very boring to explain, but they're able to, i say this, manipulate the economy to get it where they need it to be. So that's what they're working on. And again, election years come in 2024, so you know everybody's going to be, hey, look what we did, you know you know, boom times and so on and so forth. And inflation is a beast. And, you know, if we could ever find out that that a company out there truly did what we've been calling greedflation. Yes. They, oh, yeah. They see, oh, well, their prices have gone up. The consumers. I'm, I'm going to raise mine. <laughs> yeah. Haven't seemed to balk at it. Yeah. So let's raise our prices, even though we don't need to. And that's, that's I think, going on a lot in the industry. Um, straight across the board with everybody. They're kind of stepping their prices up. Um, used to be back in the day, all you got was a fuel surcharge when, you know, fuel was insane. Um, but today it's just straight across the board price hikes. Yep. So so it's it's just one of those things. If they ever catch a company, you know, with an internal memo, raise the prices because well, yeah. they don't seem to. Just because. <laughs> yeah, just because. You know, yeah. it's like that almost seems criminal, especially during a time coming out of COVID. Sure. 
uh, a time where inflation is crazy. I mean, just go to the grocery store. Every time my wife looks at the receipt oh. from the grocery store, you know, she loses more hair. I was uh, drawn into a grocery store two weeks ago. Um, I was stunned. Stunned? There was not much on the, the conveyor belt going down, and the bill was out there. Yes. Um, we have one credit card that we use for the grocery store. And, you know, every time my wife looks at it, she's like, how is it this high again? <laughs> I'm like, it's because it's, it's the grocery store. It's the grocery store. Um, so still trying to tackle inflation. It's gotten a lot better. A lot but better. You, if, you, if you stop, if you take your foot off the gas, if you kind of look the other way, you take a bathroom break, it's going it, to— It'll spike back up spike on, back is up. what the Federal Reserve is afraid of. So what they're saying is the fall of this year— coming within the next couple of months or so um, there's probably at least one more rate hike on the table possibly two Um, and then the I've heard different economists say that we might go into spring of next year and they're going to cut rates I I don't see that because every time they raise rates then another which is good another positive you know employment number or something to do with our economy is still racing away it pops up. So that literally signals, hey, you're probably going to have to raise rates again to keep that somewhat in check. And and it's just one of these things. I never took macroeconomics. I never took microeconomics. Yes. I just, I'm economically illiterate. Ran around that. <laughs> yeah. And somehow uh, they gave me a diploma anyway. Um, it's it's one of those things where it's like, well, we're, everyone's doing good. You know, I thought we're in boom times and that's where inflation comes from. Exactly. So exactly. it's, you're trying to slam the brakes on, Hey, everyone wants to buy a new house. That's great. Well, no, it's not. Exactly. It's, it messes a lot of stuff up. I mean, the, the weird part though, is you have uh, what is it? Yellow truck, um, claims bankruptcy yeah. biggest. So shipping, the, the fear there is that the federal government, nobody realizes federal government backed like 500 million or $500 billion of debt for them. Um, so the feds are kind of concerned going, hey, wait a minute, you guys go into bankruptcy, you got to start selling your trucks and your assets to come up with capital, but there might not be enough to pay everybody off. Yeah. So, and the, the second, I guess, real, really number one is the amount of people that worked for them. What do they do? You know, so kind of scary and then you go is it really boom times or is that gets into some weird economic scenario they did acquire a lot of companies did they assume too much debt you know kind of crashed and burned as they they internally make mistakes yeah Yeah. that that'll come out here shortly once they go to bankruptcy court and they start laying out financials and they may have might have done some dumb moves we'll see that shortly so you know i always wondered why yellow (laughs) trucking company why their logo was orange Mm mm-hmm and uh, <laughs> I did some digging, and we'll go to commercial break, but I'll leave you with this before we go to commercial break. I did some digging. They hired, their name notwithstanding, they hired Dow to come up with a color that was most visible on the roads at high speeds, during snow, during rain, during wind, night, day. What is the, what is the best color for safety reasons? And Dow came back with this weird orange color. I think they call it be darn. Swamp Bottom Orange or something. <laughs> it was weird. Mm-hmm. But that's the reason why yellow was always orange. Yeah. And uh, that probably won't be brought up when they go into a bankruptcy court. No, who won't? <laughs> Other than, hey, how much did you pay Dow for that? <laughs> yeah, or the lawyer, the judge <laughs> approached the bench. How come those trucks were always orange? I never got it. Uh, we'll go to commercial break. It's Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall. Is the inflation ticking back up just a little bit? And what are the reasons for that? Well, we just got into them, but um, we'll always keep an eye on it every month when oh, yeah. new numbers come out and give you the latest information. In the next segment, Secure Act 2.0, there's a catch-up provision, but a catch to it it. (laughs) for the next year. It is Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall. 636-394-5524. That's Jeff's phone number over at Capital Advisory Group. And you can find him online, capitaladvisorygrp.com. I use Jeff. And my mom now uses him, and yes. Heidi uses Jeff, and her parents are going over there, and her sister's probably going, my sister's asking me all these questions. Hey, can Jeff do this? Can Jeff do that? I said, look, here's his phone number. <laughs> Call him, 636-394-5524. And if you're not doing anything 
on your paychecks or to try to keep more of your money away from the federal government, away from the state government, yes. there is something that you can do, at least one or two things, and Jeff can help you keep more of what's yours. 636-394-5524. We'll be back right after this. Keep What's Yours continues with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Back on the show, Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall, trying to get you uh, to look at your finances. Yes. Look at your paycheck. You just got paid. Well, at least I, I just got paid on Friday. Uh, look at your paycheck. See what's coming out. See what's coming in. Exactly. And take a look at it and say, is there more I could be doing with my money? You know? And you recommend budgeting Oh, definitely. Most definitely. definitely. Most definitely. Um, that's one of the things that we look at. It's a bad word. Everybody's like, eh. or they say, oh, my electric bill is about $200 a month and my cable bill is about $100 a oh, month. Oh, I bet you hate that. And it's not being close. This is a finite number. Scribble it down. Um, we'll have people go back, do three separate months, um, in, like do uh, January, uh, March, you know, June, different months of the year, just, and it's nothing fancy, scribble it on a piece of paper, grand total of everything that you spend, credit cards, bank cards, checks you write, autos, you know, auto uh, withdrawals, ACHs, all that good stuff, add it up. You might be amazed. Um, and then what you're trying to do is see how close month to month, if you, you know, if you do three separate months in a year, how close are you? Um, and then that kind of tells you that that's your cash outlay. And then you work backwards. Do you make enough to offset that? Are you using credit cards? And some people don't realize maybe they're using credit cards to offset that shortfall. And I think everybody's got the pinch because of inflation and, you know, grocery store prices. Um, so you're seeing people that are now going, hey, wait, we're short. We're going to go steal it from our IRA or our 401k. Um, that doesn't help. So the concept is know what you're spending. That's it. Know what you're spending. Don't uh, almost, I, about this or about that. Yeah. No, that doesn't, that doesn't <clears throat> exactly. work in a budget. Um, so what we can recommend people to do is take a look at your finances, get a budget going, find out what's coming in every month, what's going out every month. And if there's a little bit of money left over, exactly, maybe you can start contributing more to your 401k. Maybe you can put more money into a Roth. Maybe you can... exactly. Do something else. You know, if you got a lot of money left over, you know, now we're talking, should we invest in real estate? Exactly. That's that? a whole nother ball game. But again, even if you say, hey, I'm doing 3% because that's my corporate match and my 401k, that's great. Maybe increase it each year by 1%. It's out of sight, out of mind, and just keep slowly increasing that till you get to, to the thresholds of maxing it out. Yeah. So with that information with that knowledge let's take a look at our finances see what's going on and if we're over 50 there was always something called the catch-up provision when it yes. comes to our 401k yes so our friends at the federal government passed uh, last year the secure act so the secure act actually which is good it's probably one of the first bills i've seen that i liked um and, and there's i think there's 80 86 different provisions and it's retirement income or retirement uh, plans adjustments to them but this is the biggest one and nobody's paying attention to it just yet so in your 401k today um, you're able to do contributory of twenty two thousand five hundred dollars and, and it sounds crazy this only uh, uh, there's only a certain element of, of yeah I say working people that pull this off but in the SECURE Act, you also get this catch-up provision. So in 23, you can do an additional $7,500. So that's $30,000 pre-tax. So if you made 40 grand and you, put, you maxed out your 401k with the catch-up provision, you'd only have taxable income of $10,000. So 40,000 income, 30,000 put away, and you'd pay tax on 10. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is the SECURE Act kicks in in 2024, you still get the catch-up provisions, but the catch-up provision will be flipped from pre-tax to after-tax. So you get to do your 7500 but you've got to put it in a Roth, and you get no tax deduction for it. So 2023 is the last year to be able to fully deduct a full $30,000 off of income. And that's something that... Uh 
I, I always have trouble with this. Your retirement, I, I guess for years, and we talked about this before the show even started, financial literacy is a problem. It's a huge problem. In this country. And, and, and pe- most people don't like math. And then they automatically, I mean, my wife being the, the I can say this, she's not listening. Um, she doesn't, once that math kicks in, her brain turns off yeah. and doesn't pay attention to it. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of people like that. And it's not, I, I get it. Um, and sometimes I talk and I'm like, oh, back up about a half hour <laughs> yeah. to help well, make sure you understand it. <laughs> and the way that I work with math, if it's just regular math, then, you know, my brain shuts off. But it's if it's math about money, mm-hmm. I always gravitate toward the bigger, more, uh, you know, optimistic numbers. Yes. <laughs> and then my wife always pulls me back yeah, down. Yeah, saying, no, it's not going to be that. Yes. <laughs> you know, stop floating away on yes. these balloons of millions of dollars that you think we have. That's not the case. So my problem with math is that, uh, you know, I have rose-tinted glasses when yes. it comes to, to financial literacy. But... We don't teach it, and I never realized until I started talking to you, Jeff, and maybe this, this is partly my fault, is that there is a point where the government says you can no longer contribute to your, your oh, tax-deferred yeah. 401k. And you and know? also to your Roth. And and to your Roth which as well. Is, which is after tax. <clears throat> so uh, I think it starts married filing jointly, 218 of income. You start to get phased out, and at like 235, 238, you're totally cut off from doing a Roth. So, again, most people are like, oh, I can't. Or what? We either see where they do it, and then we're like, hey, you can't do that. You make too much money, and we got to back it out. Or we see where they go, oh, I can't do that. But remember, everybody can do a backdoor Roth. They haven't been killed yet in the tax law, which means if you can do 6000 or 7000 to your IRA, you do seven grand to a non-deductible IRA, park it in there, literally then convert that to a Roth. So if you're a high income earner and you can't do a Roth, the backdoor Roth gets you your contributions in on an annual basis. And there was still an idea, there was an idea that that would be taken away. Yeah. They talked about it uh, t- at least two times in some of these bills, but kept it. But they still have kept so it. So take advantage of it. So it's still, I had heard... Um, you talk about it on this show, and years ago I heard someone else talking about it on another show saying, oh, it's going away. But it hasn't. <clears throat> it hasn't. They it haven't hasn't. touched it yet. So, so use, it, use it to your advantage. But I guess I always thought that if you had – I don't have endless amounts of money. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm doing – I think I'm pretty, pretty good doing 6% in a 401k, 6% in a Roth, total of 12%. Yes. Um, you know, I'm trying to make up for a lot of lost time, frankly, uh, my 20s and early 30s. But I think I'm doing pretty good. And that's, I still don't think I'm going to even come close to hitting no, that's that. And that's something that has to be a line in the sand that you have to say, this is where we are today. And engage that each year as you go forward, seriously. Um, because you're going to be stuck with your personal savings. You're going to be stuck with whatever you can put away in your 401k, your Roth, um, and that's pretty much it. So, and Social Security. Pensions don't exist anymore. Anybody probably under 35 will never see. Maybe if, if you're in the trades, you still get one, but you always— I remember back in my day, <laughs> we had pensions. Yes. And but pensions sound great. Sound great, but— some of them have kind of ran into issues, um, huge issues, where they said, hey, we're promising you $3,000 a month for the rest of your life. And then they come along five years later and go, hey, guess what? Uh, we don't have enough money in the kitty. So instead of getting three, you get two. And you got to uh, live with it. There's no, no way around it. Um, it's happened to a couple of the trades where – the problem is, is they don't have the younger people coming in, working, paying into the system yeah, yeah. to help. Or it gets lopsided where there's twice as many people retired than there are working, and you get into these weird uh, dynamics. I hate to say it. Are pensions? Is Social Security? Is is this a Ponzi scheme? Uh, if, if you and I did it, yeah, you'd go to jail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Make the new people pay for the, the older people. But if you ever look at Social Security... Um, have a lot of people that say, oh, it won't be there. It will be there because it's a slush fund. Um, it'll be there. Maybe not to the degree of what we think it is today. But 
Go online to Social Security Administration, set up your account direct with Social Security Administration, and you'll be able to see a report. The report shows all your earnings from day one when you were 15 and you started working part-time all the way out to today. One, you want to make sure that there's no gaps in there, um, unless you were out of the workforce. That's different. Um, but you want to make sure there's some credit in every one of those years coming forward. Two, what you want to do is see what it projects, how many quarters you have. You need 40 quarters in to get disability. So if something happened to you and you had to go on disability, you want to make sure you have your 40 quarters in. And three, you want to look halfway down the page, and it is in bold print, but nobody pays attention to it. It basically says it, the wage withholdings today, Social Security will be able to pay the amount that they're projecting until, like, I forget what the year is, 2038. And then you go, whoo. And then I'll pass that, it's only 80% of what they put on paper. Mm-hmm. So, yes, that is a moving target depending upon taxes collected, but nobody pays attention to that. And the key is if you're counting on a bunch of money for Social Security, um, maybe just make sure and say, hey, we'll project 80% of it. And, you know, we get three grand, but we're going to look at, you know, 2,500 on a monthly basis. So <clears throat> getting back to our original conversation about the SECURE Act 2.0, um, I always thought that if you were rich and made a bunch of money and maybe you didn't have kids, which kids suck up everything. <laughs> and then I'm some. I'm finding this out, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, you should have told me. You should have warned me about that. My budget just uh, exploded. But if you made a bunch of money and you had a bunch left over, well, you could just start socking it into your 401k until, nope. you know, it comes time to buy groceries. Yeah. But that's not the case. You are capped at yeah, pretty 22 much five. 22 five contributory plus 7,500 catch up if, if you're, you're over, over 50. 50. Yeah. And then that, but that total is $30,000. 30, if someone makes $200,000 a year. 30 is achievable, seriously? It's achievable, yeah. that's achievable. But they cap you at that. And then going forward, because of the SECURE Act 2.0, they put a new provision in here. For 2024, they have made adjustments to that as well. Yes. You get to do the full 30, but that $7,500 catch-up is after tax. So you're really not getting that full – you're not getting a full deduction. Yeah. So they're forcing it into a Roth. Now, help me figure this out because the numbers is one thing, but – What's the motivation here? The government caps us because they don't want us socking too much pre-tax away. Because if, if I socked away 50% of my salary into pre-tax, sure. then they're, they're only getting taxed exactly. on 50% of my salary. And there's people, we have them as clients, that today uh, they live on the spouse's income and the husband puts pretty much all their, their money away, sits on it. Um, you go, man, that's great. They live very fugal lives. It's great. That's their prerogative. More power to them. Um, but they're able to set aside a ton of money. The problem then is the IRS says, hey, wait, we need that revenue for tax withholding yeah. coming in. you got bridges to build. Yeah, so we're going to cut you down. And they don't want you to defer 100% of your income. I mean, there are people that figure it out. So they're like, we want you to save for retirement. We truly do because if, if I turn – 65, 70, and I don't have anything in my retirement, and I get sick, uh, they're going to have to pay for me. Pretty much you're on Medicare yeah. and Social Security, and that's it. Uh, so This country, for better or for worse, does not let people die in the streets. Maybe mm. not. Right, right. <laughs> they can't no. kick you out of the hospital until they, up they to the fix hospital, you. Yeah, yes. they have to treat you. But right. they could also say, your time's up. You can limp out of here. Have a right. nice day. Um so they have said, we want you to save for retirement so maybe you could pay for all your exactly. stuff on your own and we don't have to foot the bill for it uh, when you get older. But we also need to pay for bridges today. Yes. We can't let you defer all the, this tax money to 40 years from now yeah. because we got bills to pay. We got stuff to do. Now. Yeah. So that's the reason why they cap it. Why, why are they now deciding that your catch-up provision, if you're over 50 – they say, hey, catch up for lost time because retirement's coming up. Yeah. We'll let you sock away another 7500 Why are they saying now in 2024 that you have to – you could still utilize that catch-up provision, but you got to dump it into a Roth? Part of the provision. That was a, an agreement somebody put together um, as they were kind of going, you know, negotiating back and forth. 
um, still the bill allows you to put thirty grand a year away, um, even though the seventy five hundred you don't get the deduction for it next year. And the seventy five hundred you can sock that away into a Roth. We'll talk about how those work in just a second. But you have to pay taxes on it first. To get it to the Roth, you to have to, it's to after tax Roth. dollars, exactly. So the, the government is still getting tax money yes. off that 7500 Yes. And you're not allowed to just sock that away uh, for a later date. Now, a Roth, the, the benefits to that is you pay the taxes on it now. Yes. Then you can, it's my money now. It's basically, yes. you know, mattress <clears throat> money. Mm-hmm. I can put it into a Roth. And as long as I follow the rules of the Roth, 50- five five years are fifty nine and a half. Now your Roth contributions, you can pull your your contributions back out a week later, because um, it's after tax money. But the five year fifty nine and a half, whichever is longer rule, kicks in for earnings on that money. So if I put seventy five hundred bucks into a Roth today, mm-hmm. and over the next 10, 15, 20 years, it makes five percent. Yeah. You know, is that modest or is that? A, it's average, probably. It's av- I mean, average. today, today, give you an idea, money market rates, um, sitting money market in cash, 4.7 in a brokerage account um, to do nothing. And you go, wow, great. But like we said, inflation is 3.18. So, yeah, you're, you're better than we were a year ago in a money market, but still, it's, inflation is still hiding around the corner. Yeah. And again, most people, when they invest, they, they kind of get, the, 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 I say, confused what you're really trying to do when you invest, because otherwise you'd put, sit in fixed income and not worry about your money, safe, not going anywhere. Um, but when you invest, what you're trying to do is get a little bit better rate of return than inflation. Yeah. So, And so if I let that money sit, I make 5% on it, 20 years from now, I've, I've hit the 59 and a half, five-year window, mm-hmm. I'm past that, I'm playing by the rules of the Roth. Everything that I've made in there, at a five percent return rate of my starting sure. seventy five hundred ten grand, that's mine. Yep. That I don't have to pay capital gains tax Nothing. on that. I don't have to pay income tax on Nothing. that. Nothing. <clears throat> it's in the Roth. I'm playing by the rules. That money is mine. Yes. Now here's a little trick though, and we see this all the time. People kind of forget to go. Oh, hey, I put all this money in a Roth over the last twenty years, um, or I did it twenty years ago and I sat on it. In your tax, re- so a taxation of a Roth is at the tax return level. So we see it all the time where somebody takes out money of their Roth and we look at it and go, if you look at your 1099 from a Roth, the box will be checked that says taxable amount not determined, which means they don't know whether it's taxable or not. They don't know if you played by the rules. So we got to go back and say, hey, when you put this money in your Roth? And they're like, oh, I don't know, a long time ago. Right. So it's actually at the tax return level. So every year that you put money into a Roth, if you do your own tax return or somebody does it for you, tell them that you're doing a Roth. Because there's a little checkbox in there that you check it and say, hey, they put 5000 into a Roth. The tax return keeps the rolling tab going forward. So if it's done correctly, when the 1099 shows up, you type in the 1099, check the box, it says taxable amount not determined, the tax software knows whether that's taxable or not taxable. And this is where I'll step in and and remind everyone that doing your own taxes is insane. (laughs) (laughs) I've got some stuff going into Roth as Mm -hmm. we speak, you know, and I don't don't know any of this stuff. I, I don't understand how anybody is able to do their own taxes. Number one, they're probably CPAs themselves. Well, they could be, yeah, or have some exposure to the industry. Or number two, they're gluttons for punishment, (laughs) you know? So let Jeff take care of doing your taxes for you. He knows what's coming up, like the Secure Act 2.0 provision that's in there. You can still do the catch-up provision. You can still sock away 7,500 extra bucks. Yep. But now... Going forward, after this year, starting in 2024, you got to do it in a Roth because the government wants their money. Yes. They want it now. They're broke, <coughs> you know. And you know, I could sit here and say, well, government, you'll get even more money if you just wait 30, 40 Hypothetically, years. Hypothetically. I don't well, think they want to. <laughs> we're not going to make it 30, 40 years. You yes. Know? We've got bridges to pay for today. So Well, and a, and a, and a debt level that is... Uh, crazy yeah. that they're paying interest on. And every time they raise the interest rates, hypothetically, the rate on that debt oh, goes they're, up, too. They're, they're tightening 
the noose around their yes. own neck. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. So the government's making rules, and it's just, well, how do I play within these rules? Get Jeff, 636-394-5524, capitaladvisorygrp.com. Have them do your taxes next year. Have them look at your stuff today. Tell them what you got going into a 401k. Tell them what you got going into a Roth. Do you have a pension? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have kids? Yeah. Do you want to save for their future? What is the most uh, tax efficient efficient <laughs> way of doing all of this? Because everything that you do, the IRS has a hand in. Yes. So how do we smack that hand back a exactly. little bit? And how do we do it the legal way? Legal way. We don't smack it. We just kind of push it yeah. to the side. No, 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 no. This not this not yours yeah. yet. Okay. So the idea is keep what's yours. You do not have to be paying all these taxes because somewhere in the tax code, someone decided to throw us a bone. Yes. Like normal people. And uh, admittedly, the tax code is written for the rich and the powerful and big corporations. Who have the power to get in and say, hey, we need this rule. (laughs) Hey, here's my lobbyist. Go sit down with this politician and hammer out a tax code that's beneficial for me and me only. They threw a couple bones in there for us normal people. Yes. And you don't know they're in there because no one has told us about it. And I was just listening to a conversation uh, on the radio this past week, and someone said, "Hey, this is this is part of the tax code. How come we've never heard of it?" And I'm just laughing. <laughs> I'm in my car dry. I think it was McGraw. I'm laughing because <laughs> they don't tell us about it. You know, Josh Hawley hasn't come to my house and said, "Hey, we just passed the Secure Act 2.0. Yeah. Here's what's in it. Let yeah. me explain the catch-up provision." That ain't gonna happen. Never gonna happen. So you need to find someone who can do it for you, and Jeff Zufall is that someone. Senior tax strategist and wealth advisor with Capital Advisory Group, 636-394-5524. That's his phone number, and you can find him online at capitaladvisorygrp.com. Keep What Yours continues with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Back on the show, Keep What's Yours, Jeff Zufall. I'm Josh Gilbert. And Jeff, let me tell you this. We just had a conversation with somebody uh, about scams. David Pogue from CBS yes. Sunday Morning. <laughs> He's great. I love him. I love everything he does. Uh, he's got a pretty good relationship with, with the Heidi show that we do in the afternoons. Yes. And he was just talking scams and, and the ways that people get scammed. And it was so interesting because I had just gotten an email from the IRS. Yes. Jeff. And I think you know where this is going. <laughs> and it said something to the tune of we've got your refund here or we need more information or yes. you know you you're going to get audited or something. Yeah. And I was like, well this seems fishy number 1 mm-hmm. because Jeff always tells us the IRS isn't going to email us. Um not unless you start contact with them first. Yeah, not unless you have initiated the yes. initial contact. Um so I look at the return address and it was, you know, from uh, support at irs.gov. Yeah. Backslash, you know, XYZ backslash <laughs> Terry's Pool Emporium. Yeah, exactly. Dot com. Yep. And it's like, well, what the heck? <laughs> what what is that? the heck is this? <clears throat> so obviously this is a total scamola. Yes. They try to disguise the emails as being official IRS yes. emails, but they can't actually get an IRS.gov no, you know, I don't email think address. They're able to do that at all. So Terry's Pool Emporium, <laughs> you know, somewhere. Yeah. Somebody needs to tell, hey, hey, Terry, <laughs> they're using your email addresses yeah. to pose as IRS agents. Shut it down. But, but there, there is one out there and it's uh, where they mail it directly to you because they know that the IRS will deal strictly by mail. Um, typically you get a letter. If you get a certified letter, that means they're trying to get your attention. You really want to contact them. But there is one that's being sent out. It comes in like a cardboard envelope um, and it, you open it up and inside it has a letter from the IRS, looks official, and it says, you know, in relation to your unclaimed refund. So a lot of people are waiting for their refunds out there. So anybody that sees that would go, hey, they're contacting me on that. Um, But what they're looking for is just get your bank account information. That's it. Yeah. Um, So they already kind of got your name, address. They got your bank account. They can get you. So be very, very careful. 
And the IRS, you know, the, the tip we got from David Pogue, the tip we get from uh, Jeff Zufall every time we talk about scams, call the actual IRS. Yes. And say... You may have to sit on the phone for a while and mm-hmm. get somebody to respond. Let's say, say, did you... Yeah. I have this send notice. Send me something. <laughs> yeah. Typically, IRS will have upper right-hand corner. It has a couple of, uh, uh, like, ID numbers um, that you could use. You give them that number. You give them your social security number. Boom. And then if you're in doubt, go to irs.gov, the official website, look at the 800 number, call from there. And I'll tell you, somebody from my bank called me, this was years ago, and started asking me questions. And I was like, this is weird. This is out of the blue. This is weird. Mm-hmm. You're wanting, you know, my zip code. You're wanting my social. This is really weird. And I hung up. Mm-hmm. And I called the bank back. Yeah. The actual bank, you know, on the back of my credit card, on the back, you know. I called the bank back and I said, did you need to call me for some reason? And he said, yeah, you just hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So in that case, it was real, but it, I did yeah. the right thing. Exactly. I called them exactly. back because, it, the, you know, they'll get somebody in line and say, no, there's nothing wrong with your account. Yeah. And I'll say, well, then who just called me <laughs> and was asking for my social and my bank account numbers? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so don't be fooled by any of these scams. And if you ever have any questions, hang up. And call the bank back directly. Yes. Or call the IRS back directly. So there, there is, just like what you were talking about, there is a form for their checking. When you file a return, random selection, nothing, you're not getting audited, but they do want you to verify your income. So you have to call this 800 number and the IRS will walk you right through everything. Um, it takes about five minutes to do it, but they're just validating, validating the number. And again, from a security standpoint for the IRS... Get a PIN number because IRS and you are the only two that have that PIN number. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a six-digit code. You can go irs.gov, request it. It's probably shut down right now, but it will open up here shortly. Um, they'll mail you one right in the mail, both both you know husband and wife or both spouses, and you get these two codes. No, And I don't want to say it's not hackable, um, but it pretty much is a little, little safety feature kicked on. And married filing jointly, they'll still send me two. Yes. One for me and one for my wife. Yes. Even though we're filing one tax return. Yep. You'll each have a code that gets keyed in your tax return. So when it gets I'll e-filed. Need, and I'll need to keep them both. Yes. When it gets e-filed, like if we go to e-file, it'll actually lock it down, won't let us e-file because we don't have the right PIN numbers in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they issue one every year consistently. If you haven't gotten one by, say, uh, I say by around Christmas, call them or go online, order another one. They'll mail it to you pretty quick. And that'll help prevent people from stealing your identity when yes. it comes to filing your tax returns. Um, charitable donations. We just had the Men's Group Against Cancer Radiothon. Uh, thanks yes. to everyone who contributed and, and got some tickets or maybe bought one of the packages. I had the big Dogtown pizza package. Yes. <laughs> Free Dogtown for a year. Jeff, uh, I know you wanted it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, consolation pizza. I'll switch right. by your office. There you go. There you go. Uh, but for as far as charitable contributions, I know that during the pandemic, 300 singles, $600 yes. married filing jointly. They took that away. There was some talk about bringing it back. But it's not. But it's not. It's not back. It's so not. the only way you can get a, chari- a charitable contribution today is to do a Schedule A, itemized deductions. Married filing jointly is like twenty seven grand. That's uh, state and local tax, um, you know, your charitable contributions, um, medical expenses, all kind of tossed into the kitty to see if you can come up with that number. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately... Um, I think that they they've, they've, there's talk of it because some of the charities um, are not going to be, I don't want to say defunded, but underfunded because people won't give it just because they're not getting a deduction anymore for it. And I hate to, to you know, admit it and say this is, this is the human nature in me. Um, it was easier to pull the wallet out when, oh, yeah. oh when I go, can get a tax hey, deduction for this. I know I could get 600 bucks on this. So you know, that's, it's not saving right. you a ton of money, but you're still deducting. Right. And I'm still doing it for the good of doing it. it that's what you it, want to do it for. It made it easier to key those numbers yeah. in. Yeah, way easier. <laughs> uh, when you think that, oh, I'll save the receipt and, and give it to Jeff at the end of the year. So uh, that has not come back yet. Not yet. But as soon as it does, we'll remind everybody. Yes. Uh, people with children, check your withholdings. Yes. Um, Child tax credit. Um, we, we see a lot where people are like, hey, can I write off my, my mom's going to move in with me. 
Yeah. Um, can I write her off? Um, you can, as long as you pay for more than fifty uh, percent of their well being, or basically a hundred percent of their well being. So there is that technical to say, hey, they get in Social Security, or they have any pensions, they have any cash in their oh, name. Interesting. Um, you got to be very careful, but again, at the end of the day, it's five hundred bucks. So I was a dependent for them for the first 18 years of my life and technically for the first 26 years of yeah. my life. <laughs> um, but uh, they can be dependents of mine. So the first 17 or 17 years of your life, they got a couple thousand bucks for you. Mm -hmm. um, when you turn 18, they got 500 bucks. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. And then it could, it could flip if they move back in with you, but you pay basically more than 50% of their well-being which means food on the table, clothing, you provide shelter, um, all that fun stuff. Do you need receipts for all that stuff? Um, yeah, I'd, again, document, document, Every, document. Everything, everything. To make everything, sure everything. that you could prove it. Mm. Um, but again, you'd have to look at, does that parent file a tax return? What's their tax return look like? Well, how much money do they make? What assets do they have? The IRS could come back and say, look, sure. you're getting X amount of money in Social Security. You're not actually no taking way that, care exactly. of Exactly. There's no way you're taking, taking care, care of, of themselves, but you just- In have, your house. In yeah. your house. Yeah. Right. Okay. So In some cases, they're probably taking care of you. More than likely. <laughs> <laughs> but that Social Security check of theirs. Yes. Um, and then I did just see this before we go. Uh, there was a class action lawsuit for one of the grocery stores, and it was about their, their wine. Mm -hmm. The wine prices. Uh, and they said, if you can show us receipts dating back to 2015. Nobody's got them. That you bought, <laughs> you know, uh, 75 units of wine from a, uh, who's got that? No one. Absolutely no one. Even you? Do you have I don't, that? No. The only time I would have that receipt is if I bought like coffee for the office. Um, and I, my wife bought it at Deerbergs or Schnooks or something like that. We'd have that receipt. It would be scanned and put in with a file. But for me to go through that and find 2015 coming forward, it's not worth it. Yeah. Then that's what they're, they're that's what on. they're going for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's Jeff Zufall. Sometimes even record keeping isn't worth it for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you need, but the last thing he wants to see is your old smelly shoe box. Yes. No, we don't want filled those. with receipts that have faded over time. To nothing. And you're like, wait a minute, what does this say? <laughs> Get an app. Um, take pictures, take pictures, um, an app. Put it in, a, in a, an Excel spreadsheet. Yep, exactly. And have a nice clean, that's what my wife does. Yep. Have a nice clean sheet for Jeff when you come in to see him. But another reminder, tax day isn't just on April 15th of every year. It's every time you get a paycheck. It's every exactly. time you get paid. It's every time you render services. Yes. The government's there is saying. <coughs> Being your partner kind of stands to the side. <laughs> we get 20 to 30% of that. Yes. Uh, or if it's really big, maybe 39 um, so taxes are always with us in everything that we do. So why shouldn't we do it more tax efficiently? Exactly. And that's what that's Jeff, the key. That's the key. Keep more of what's yours. Do everything more tax efficiently and you'll find you have more in your paycheck, more in your pocketbook and more to go and pay for those fun things like, like that lake house, Jeff. Yes. It's fun. I'm going to get me one of those lake houses one day. 636-394-5524, capitaladvisorygrp.com. Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group. Keep more of what's yours. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. See you next week. You've been listening to Keep What's Yours with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Manager at Capital Advisory Group. To learn more, call 636-394-5524 or visit capitaladvisorygrp.com.